You're in the rant hole where I rant about whatever my $15 a month plus patrons want me to rant about. Today's rant comes from Garfield, who says, rant about the Utena soundtrack. <laughs> Utena has a fucking amazing soundtrack. Not only is the regular music from the show pretty good, pretty memorable, you know, I've listened to the OST a number of times, not necessarily something I would just throw on, but, you know, it's good anime background music. But then you've got... God, I'm fucking burpy. Then you've got the J.A. Caesar songs. So if you've never heard of J.A. Caesar, which is a Japanese guy, he, he just named himself that. He's a, uh, Google him. He looks awesome. He's a cool looking guy. And uh, J.A. Caesar is a longtime experimental composer who has worked on shitloads of films, I think even stage plays and operas and stuff. He's just a... Um, generally worked on lots of art house crap, especially from the 80s and 90s. I think he's still active to this day, but uh, I don't know if he's done any other anime work, maybe a little bit here and there, but nothing on the level of what he did for Revolutionary Girl Utena. Now, I, I think that he ended up on the project just because Kunihiko Ikuhara himself being an auteur weirdo who's into, you know, crazy shit, uh, was probably a fan. Um, and brought him onto the project, and the results, J.A. Caesar created a genre for Revolutionary Girl Utena, which they call Choral Rock. It's basically fairly straightforward rock music, but with an entire chorus singing all of the lyrics. The lyrics themselves were written by Ikuhara, director of the show, um, so, you know, they are fucking bizarre. Most of the lyrics uh, seem like they were written during some kind of acid trip uh, in one lurid night of insanity, but <laughs> J.A. Caesar makes these really rockin', weird compositions out of these songs that bring life to the battle scenes in the show, and there's a different one for each fight, so, you know, they, they vaguely, symbolically tie in to what's going on in the fights, but the main one that you'll remember is, of course, Zetai Unmei Mokushiroku, or Ultimate Destiny Apocalypse, which plays in every episode when Utena is climbing the staircase to, uh to get her powers, and, like, it's the perfect example of, like, what is so weird and, and like, sort of postmodern about this show, in that the song is basically just poetically describing this, like, combat of light and darkness and, and using this very descriptive language. It's got a great melody, it's super memorable, but the the ending bit of the song is truly the legendary part, because after they sing, Sentai! Over and over, it's so fucking bizarre, because it's just the word mokushiroku, but with all the syllables rearranged over and over again, just to sound insane. And, like, it's, it's a perfect metaphor for Utena as a whole, where... At its core, there is this this memorable, dramatic, already weird in that it's like being performed by a full chorus and it's just, just this very off-kilter sound. But then it just kind of dives off the deep end into just now it's like a self-parody. And that's Utena on the whole. Yes, it is. it has all these deep themes, interesting characters, it's got this great... Uh, distinctive visual style, all of that stuff that people talk about that, you know, that makes people, oh, yes, Utena is one of the classic anime. But, like, what makes the show great is that it is also kind of a parody of itself. It's so, it's self-aware about the fact that it doesn't want to come off as, like, pretentious and stuffy, so it just jumps into this realm of total absurdity from time to time, where there's an episode where a character... Um, you know, wears a, a, a Dior bell and turns into a cow. So, like, the show can get really fucking weird, and that song uh, perfectly shows that escalation into total absurdity. I've seen um, some... I, I watched one time some... I don't remember what the fuck it was called uh, at all, but, like, some weird Japanese art film that had a J.A. Caesar soundtrack that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It was just... A, obtuse imagery with weird colors and this eclectic soundtrack um 
I would love to jump into more of the guy's work. I'd love to see more of what he's done because it is all so unique, so experimental, so weird. And you know I'm about that life. But yeah, the choral rock music in that show um, is honestly a huge influence on me because I'm a big fan of vocal layering in general. Like A lot of the music I like has a lot of vocal layering, but if you listen to a lot of my music, there is often overpowering amounts of vocal layering going on where I kind of do uh, my own brand of choral rap. If you ever hear the song Body Rolls that I've done where there's like 12 of my voice just chanting, Sit bottle deep, don't know where to go. I don't know where to put my dick in all these body roll. I fucked up the lyrics of my own song, but if you listen to it, you'll understand what I'm trying to talk about. Everybody know me, but you don't know what I'm about. All right, that's all I have to say about the Utina soundtrack. 